Okay, I got some more stuff that I think is relevant. I'm going to try to see if it fits to take down the sound. I'm doing this on a different laptop. Hopefully I'll just turn the sound down. Okay, here's the thing. Maybe if I, you know, whisper it sounds better. Um, if you look at the screen there, you'll see the 119 and the 168 on screen. I think what Christ is doing here is um, outlining historical trends. In other words, broad swath characteristics that will apply specifically during the tribulation, but, you know, as a more slow burn during church because at the time he's talking church hasn't yet begun it was still possible that enough people in Israel would have accepted him and there wouldn't have to have been church but you know he's talking two months before the crucifixion so you know what are you gonna say about that I mean maybe it's not two months but it's it's really short because in Matthew 26 he's already at two days before Passover you know, the scheduled Passover, because they were five days short on the calendar. That's how the Lord could eat the Passover, but be the Passover, dying on, dying on true Passover. Anyway, getting back to this. Okay, Matthew in front of you is Matthew 24, verses 19 through 22 in the 119 segment. I think that's the, how do you want to call this, the flipsis trend. The flipsis isn't going to be quite the right word, because he's going to cover that later. But you see here, you know, and gastry, and my badly pronounced Greek, okay. Um, Paul's going to later talk about church as in pregnancy to deliver eternity. You know, in other words, we're the bridge of time back to Israel's time. So, that's why we share in the characteristic of it being it's sort of the same characteristic as the tribulation, except for them, it's going to be the literal days. For us, it's like the whole period. So he's cutting it short for the sake of the elect, right here. Okay. Um, the implication, of course, being that church becomes apostate, and that's really why the rapture happens, because nobody else is going to believe anymore, just like, you know, they rejected Christ, so we're going to reject him finally enough, where nobody's ever going to believe anymore unless we get raptured up. I think that's what he's setting it up for. In this particular thing in 119, the 119 is a metaphorical meaning, um, which I'll cover in a second. But I think the whole point here with all this text, which, you know, there's no point in highlighting it. You can see it. I think the point he's trying to make is high. The tribulation period, with church being the slow burn version, is going to be one of fleeing, of being persecuted, of suddenly having to leave, of wars, specifically Christian persecution, which of course it is. Today's version of Christian persecution in some parts of the world is, is just as bad as described here in, as we see in the Greek. But for the most part in your more developed countries, the way you know, Christianity is persecuted is a lot more um, by means of disdain. And of course, we Christians being so clueless about Bible, we make the, the situation worse. Okay, we actually don't communicate the Bible properly. We don't understand it properly. We can't even get the Bible right. So we're also a source of ridicule because of what we say about the Bible isn't actually in the Bible. And the unbeliever doesn't know that what we say is not true of the Bible. Um, they only know that what we say is stupid. And it is stupid because it's not what Bible says. I'm trying to make this bigger, okay? So this whole category of the 119, which is really cute that it's 119, I think that's why it's 119, is it's a trend. Okay, 119 is not 126, and that's where, you know, will come later. Remember 126 in Isaiah 53? He had two of them, and he was, he was basically saying, Hi, from the time I'm writing in 714 B.C., 126 years from now, the 
temple's going to go down. That was his timeline. And then there was another 126 after that. Okay. So he's playing on the 126 to show temple down. Well, see, Christ is the temple the temple depicts, which you know. Okay. Once the temple goes down, which is what he's talking about, once it goes down, we're still body of Christ, so in a sense, a new temple replaces the old temple. So how long is it going to take for us to go down? And when we go down, that's what kicks off the tribulation. So that's why this, okay, is 119 instead of 126. And again, I'm just talking out loud. You know, since the beginning. Gostry, okay, play on Gostry. And it's also, I think, he's playing on the fact that, you know, when Moses wrote Genesis 1, you know, using his second date line as his age, the thing is, is that he's writing Genesis 1 at the same time he's writing Psalm 90. And Psalm 90 is specifically date line to be the beginning of the 1051st year after the flood. And he also dated it as 63 sevens from Jacob's entry into the land. And since he's writing Genesis with a different dateline formula, but at the same time, okay, I mean, one of the dateline formulas is the same, the other one is his age. Since he's doing that, um, I think Christ is folding that in you know, with the phrase since the beginning also, which you already picked up on right here. Okay. I think Christ is folding that in because it's like a new beginning. It's like a new genao. You know, a new generation of church. The genao of the church. Okay. So I think he's making a play on that and is expecting us to know that because, you know, Daniel 9.26 says that the period ends with a flood of troops flood of troops to take down the temple okay Daniel 9 26 which was supposed to be his death if his death occurred on schedule okay he would have died there would have been a flood of troops who would have taken down the temple anyhow but he was supposed to die at 40 but he signed seven years early so he's adjusting that seven years out here with the 119 and playing on I think Daniel 9 and Genesis 1 at the same time it's the Lord he's genius you know okay so that's I think that's pretty clear as is like hi this is a characteristic of the whole period for you know these are specific verses that apply exactly literally for the trib people but for us they apply metaphorically real but it's a it's a metaphor for the whole period and he's using the 119 therefore symbolically so, you know, with, you know, enough ties, so we can always tie into Genesis and he's tied to Daniel. Okay? So that we get our scriptural fix or scriptural GPS as to what he's talking about in that section. Okay, now the next section is not quite so easy and yet not hard to explain. 168, I didn't know what that was. Well, that's 284s. And I think I'll cover that in the next increment because I'm not sure if I'm recording anymore. I'm not used to this extra laptop. I'm doing this on a different laptop now.